Good morning. I'm Dr. Leonard Marks speaking to you from the Department of Urology at UCLA School of Medicine. I'm delighted to be here to tell you about a very important advance in the way prostate cancer is managed. We call it the sea change of prostate cancer and it actually began in large measure right here at UCLA. The term sea change given to us originally by Shakespeare uh, has come to mean a profound transformation, that is a dramatic and uh, irreversible turnaround of a system that has been present for many years, and that is exactly what's happening in prostate cancer today. Let me tell you what I mean. We'll be glad to take your questions on Twitter uh, using the hashtag that's shown here. You can make a note of it if you'd like. The quandary of prostate cancer that we set out to address about eight or nine years ago was this. There are about 30,000 deaths a year from prostate cancer. This is a very serious problem, second most common cause of cancer death in men, only behind lung cancer. But on the other hand, about 240,000 new cases a year are diagnosed, meaning that the mortality rate is rather low. Many cancers being diagnosed are not potentially fatal. The way prostate cancer was diagnosed for the past 30 years or so was this. Using ultrasound, the prostate was divided into sextants and blind biopsies were made using ultrasound guidance. We can see the prostate, but we can't see prostate cancer. So the idea was that hopefully if that PSA elevation was caused by cancer, one of these blind biopsies would show it. Now what we do is we perform an MRI to show us where prostate cancer is located. Many prostate cancers can be seen on MRI and then using a special device, which I will tell you about in a moment, we can then target prostate cancers uh, and be, uh, have a diagnosis made much more specifically. All the other serious solid malignancies can be imaged uh, on a uh, image, CAT scan, MRI, whatever, uh, if you think to order the study, but not, Im not prostate cancer. The tissue differences between benign and malignant are very subtle. Now comes along sophisticated MRI, which can show many cases of prostate cancer. The problem with the old method is that it was blind. It wasn't targeted. It mainly samples the outer part of the prostate gland. We now know that about 30% of prostate cancers are located in the middle part of the prostate gland. It fails to detect a number of important cancers. And it frequently detects little tumor spots which are not important. We have been over-treating many of these little tumor spots. And basically, it was designed to detect yesterday's prostate cancer, not today's. Multiparametric MRI, MR imaging uh, which is what I'm going to be speaking about now, is the key to making this successful. This is an example of multiparametric imaging. This is the T2-weighted image, which shows spatial excellent spatial resolution. There's the tumor there. This is another of the parameters used in multiparametric imaging, showing diffusion-weighted imaging, confirming the spot there. This is a measure of the density of the tissue. The denser the tissue, the more likely it is to be cancer. The third parameter is multi is dynamic contrast uh, enhancement, and there is a measure of how blood flow goes into and out of the prostate gland, confirming the other two parameters. And uh, there is a tumor which is found corresponding to the imaging on the multiparametric MRI. Big change from the blind biopsies of yesteryear. Thus, from the 1980s up until the present, the prostate cancer diagnostic algorithm, if you will, was like this. You got a PSA test. If it was elevated, a man underwent a blind biopsy. If any prostate cancer was present, then surgery or radiation was usually prescribed. Now, selective PSA testing is used. Targeted biopsy is used to determine uh, where to go with the needle. And when prostate cancer is found, we then 
type it. We figure out what kind of cancer it is. Is it a, a bad one that is going to require surgery or radiation? There are still plenty of those around. Is it a really mild one that may be suitable just for watching, what we call active surveillance? Or is it one best suited for focal therapy, which is the large in-between cluster of patients between the bad ones and the really mild ones. Many people will be candidates for focal therapy in the not too distant future. So the way this works is that an MRI is performed first and then a skilled radiologist such as Dr. Margolis or Dr. Raymond in our group uh, circles the area of interest based on the three parameters which he's uh, employed. The MR is then fused with real-time ultrasound allowing us to see this in a clinic setting, uh, much like it used to be uh, visualized, but now with the ability of MRI guiding us. And then a 3D reconstructed model of the prostate is created incorporating the target and targeted biopsy or systematic biopsy if we wish can be done. This new modality brings the accuracy of MRI into an office setting. And this is the device which we use for doing the image fusion. This is a very clever new image fusion device, first approved by the FDA in 2008. It consists of a tracking assembly here, which attaches to the uh, ultrasound probe. It includes a monitor where the work is performed. And the guts of the device is a digital video processor, which on the fly converts the uh, the uh, scanned image to a digital 3D reconstructed model upon which the work is done, the image fusion is performed, and tracking of biopsy site locations is accomplished. This is the setup in our clinic with the, uh, an ultrasound machine here, the Artemis device here, patient in the lateral decubitus position here. We make a scan and segment the prostate first. Uh, then we... Um, then we... Let's see, let's go back one slide here. And then we uh, do a, uh, a segmentation. We define the prostate. We uh, outline it. We do our targeting on that uh, segmented image. And then uh, if we want to, we can return to previous biopsy sites using the tracking mechanism of the Artemis device and return just to suspect areas that used to be, uh, that were previously diagnosed as having a, a lesion that may need to be tracked, and we can go back there and, uh, and check it again. So we've gotten large experience with the Artemis device in the United States, the largest in the United States. Um, we started this work in September of 2009, and through October of last year, we've, cre we've performed more than 1,800 biopsy sessions. Now this is well over 2,000 for men undergoing a first biopsy, men who had prior negative biopsies and we couldn't find their cancer or by conventional methods or men in our active surveillance program where we're tracking low-risk prostate cancers. The, uh, the amount of work is staggering. We've, uh, we've taken some 28,000 biopsy cores, about a third of them being targeted, about two-thirds of them being mapping and rarely a free hand. We take a 12-core template biopsy from each patient initially and then one core every three millimeters of the target area. Compared to the old method, the new biopsy method is three times more accurate in detecting clinically important prostate cancers. It finds many cancers that have been missed by conventional biopsy. It reflects the true pathology in the organ. It tells us what really is there when you compare our biopsy findings with the whole organ when the prostate is removed. It aids in screening for active surveillance, makes, makes us be sure that we are surveying the right men and not missing important cancers. And it improves follow-up for active surveillance as well. And for men with a negative biopsy, it provides a degree of reassurance not possible with conventional biopsy of the prostate. So our next horizon, now that we've been fairly successful in identifying and getting our hands around lesions in the prostate, our thinking is if we can see these tumors, if we can follow them, if we can diagnose them, characterize them, follow them longitudinally, why not treat them where they lay? Why not perform focal 
therapy of prostate cancer, much like lumpectomy for breast cancer in women. In this brief video, uh, I will show you now how, how our, uh, our planning has gone forward from the initial experience with focal therapy to, with uh, targeted biopsy to the current uh, initiative with focal therapy. Just as lumpectomy has become an important treatment for many women with breast cancer, so too might a male lumpectomy become an option for some men with prostate cancer. Our work over the past five years at UCLA with targeted prostate biopsy has enabled us to find, identify, follow, and characterize tumors in the prostate. Our next horizon is to treat those tumors in the prostate focally. By focally, we mean targeting only the tumor for treatment, leaving healthy prostate tissue untouched. Many of the 240,000 new cases of prostate cancer may qualify for focal therapy, sparing men the complications of surgery or radiation treatment. In fact, 30,000 men will die this year from prostate cancer. Here we have two three-dimensional images, the ultrasound image of what we're doing to the patient right now, and the MRI image taken by a radiologist ahead of time so we can see the cancer. By fusing these two images together, we can re-establish the exact location of the patient's tumor in the doctor's office. So there are many challenges. Work is now underway towards focal therapy of prostate cancer. Uh, we're actually working with a prototype device that is capable of delivering uh, precision treatment to a tumor within the gland. This is what we call a prostate phantom. It's a simulated prostate made of agar, a kind of gel. This is a needle going into the Apollo's arm that we can then insert into the target. And this blue outline here, that's the actual tumor that's been fused on to the ultrasound scan. And so, this white streak here is a needle that's going directly into the target. This investigational method takes advantage of MRI localization of tumors and via image fusion allows ultrasound guided placement of treatment fibers into the prostate with millimeter accuracy. Laser energy is used because the treatment ablation of tissue is precise and the fibers are tiny, able to fit through conventional needle guides. Ablation means we apply laser energy or heat to the tumor so that the cancer cells will die. This is a laser fiber that we use to ablate prostate cancer. The end of the laser fiber contains a device called a diffuser, which focuses, rather than focusing the energy on a single point, spreads the energy out like a light bulb. We are hopeful that this treatment can soon be achieved in a doctor's office under local anesthesia. This is a replica of a real prostate that it'll actually turn white once the laser fiber heats it up to the same temperature the tissue would be damaged at. So what we're doing here is inserting this laser fiber into the prostate replica and showing what would happen in an actual treatment. This treatment is early in the developmental stage, but our hope is that one day soon, that men with a prostate cancer, at least some men, with a prostate cancer will be candidates for focal therapy. That is, can be spared the potential morbidity associated with whole organ therapy, surgery, or radiation, uh, and we can devote our, our energy just to the tumor. So now that you've had that introduction, this is what we do for focal therapy in our clinical trials, which have now been ongoing and are now completed. This is an MRI which shows a prostate cancer right here, amenable to focal therapy. The uh, laser fiber <clears throat> is inserted into the prostate shown here. And after the treatment, uh, this well-defined, well-circumscribed cavity within the prostate is the result 
of that brief treatment in the office. This is a man who walked in with prostate cancer and walked out of the clinic a short time later without prostate cancer. And importantly, the morbidity from whole organ therapy, surgery or radiation, which are important for some people, but not all, was spared in this individual. So in our phase one clinical trials, which we have successfully completed, there have been no adverse events, no incontinence, no erectile dysfunction. The feasibility of prostate uh, focal therapy has been confirmed. Uh, we've made important industry liaisons with some industry giants, Medtronic uh, and uh, Hitachi corporations for the laser uh, aspects and for the imaging aspects. We have three patents that have been filed with the U.S. Patent Office uh, for this uh, clinic-based procedure. And we are moving rapidly toward the engineering and the phase two clinical trials that will be necessary to take this forward and apply for FDA approval. I want to mention three other resources for those of you who may be interested in this subject. Uh, on YouTube, if you'll enter UCLA biopsy in the YouTube search engine, there are a number of videos there relating to this that you'll see. If you enter prostate biopsy on Wikipedia, that's a nice uh, information source for you. And if you want to read published articles, uh, if you'll enter my initials, uh, Mark's LS and prostate biopsy in the PubMed search engine, uh, many freely available abstracts and many articles as well, full articles, will be available to you. Thank you for your uh, attention this morning, and I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. All right, we've got a, a few questions here. So what are the indications for the new biopsy method? Somebody wants to know. Well, the most important indication is someone who's had a prior biopsy that didn't show cancer, but suspicion of cancer persists. For example, a nodule is present in the prostate, or PSA is elevated and continues to go up. That is an ideal candidate for prostate-targeted uh, uh, biopsy using MR guidance. Uh, we do this in our place for first-time biopsies as well, and our patients in active surveillance are also being, uh, being uh, re receiving this method of biopsy. We've got, um, got an another question here. Is the new method painful? So actually, it is probably less painful than the traditional method. It's one in which the patient uh, participates because he's watching it on a screen. Uh, and many people have commented that it is actually less painful than what they've had before using the blind biopsy method. Uh, is focal therapy available now at UCLA? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is not right now, but soon. Uh, the kind of focal therapy we have uh, become interested in using focal laser ablation in our clinic is not yet, yet FDA approved, and we do not yet have a clinical trial at the moment. We will in the not too distant future. However, a new device called High Intensity Focused Ultrasound, HIFU, H-I-F-U, has been recently FDA approved. We will be obtaining uh, the, one of the first machines on the west side of LA, the first machine on the west side of LA, and we'll be performing focal therapy using this other modality in the very near future, probably uh, by summer of, uh, of this year. The, uh, the, the HIFU, another question about HIFU. Uh, HIFU made the news when it was approved by the FDA in October of last year. UCLA has already agreed uh, to purchase the device and will be offering this in a clinical trial setting uh, later in the uh, year, perhaps by early summer. There's one more question. Is the new biopsy method expensive? So here's the answer to that. It is no more expensive than the conventional biopsy, except for the MRI, which must be done in advance. Much of our work is supported by the National Institutes of Health, and there's been a substantial amount of underwriting for it. Um, but, but, and the price for the MRI comes down year by year as the uh, experience with it increases, as volume increases. But it's such a valuable adjunct uh, to what we're doing that we think the investment of, uh, of patient dollars is very important here. And by the way, Medicare pays for it. Thank you for your time and attention this morning. It's been a pleasure.